Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will share with you a couple of achievements I've completed with my latest project where I make this 10 inch Helix 200 EMC telescope suitable for deep sky astrophotography. In particular I have a couple of achievements to share. So the first is my autofocusing routine is now done using the standard telescope focuser and on screen you can see the curve that I get using it. Second, I was finally able to get my first images using the telescope itself, Sterizona schmidt hessegren reducer and IMX571 sensor. On the screen you can see one of my test images that I captured and later in the video I will explain to you how I made this telescope work. By the way, is it just me or do you also guys struggle with the weather? It's been really awful this spring and I personally don't remember when we had that bad galaxy season with so many clouds in the night sky on the east coast. Despite that, I've been slowly working on the telescope. If you remember from the last video, I had a Crayford style focuser installed here earlier and um, the main reason for that was bad performing uh, main focuser of the telescope and uh, basically what I did is I locked the mirror of the telescope, installed this Crayford style focuser and my autofocusing routine issue was resolved by basically uh, the focusing routine was done using a ZWO electronic focuser. I was getting really nice planetary images uh, last year and uh, I got my first deep sky image using this telescope at a native focal length, also using the focuser, everything was well. But there is kind of no point in imaging a 2500mm focal length and unless you're doing uh, planetary, in my opinion, or unless you have a really a good quality uh, sky where the aperture and the focal length will allow you to resolve all the details uh, through the atmosphere. Anyway, I got the Arizona reducer, installed it right here in the Crayford style focuser and I got a problem with the vignetting. So this is the adapter that belongs to the telescope, it has three and a quarter inch uh, female thread and schmidt hessegren male thread at the end. So this is how imaging circle of the Crayford style focuser looks like once you install the adapter. The imaging circle becomes much smaller and you can see it here basically. So imaging circle, once you install adapter, the circle becomes much smaller and if you take images at native focal length, once again, no issues, but once you use the reducer, that's where the issue comes from. You still can get nice images if you use IMX533 sensor, but if you happen to use IMX294 sensor or IMX571 sensor, then you get a vignetting that in my case was impossible to correct with flats. I decided to try improving the performance of the focuser, of the telescope itself, by installing these bearings that you can see on the screen. The idea came from Midmod's channel on YouTube, where the same modification was done on an 8-inch mid telescope. I ordered bearings on Amazon, installed them, and guess what? My focusing issue was resolved for just under $10. I also want to share with you my autofocus settings that I have in Nina. So first of all, as you can see, I have this huge parameter for my backlash set, and uh, the step size is set to 300, which is much larger compared to uh, what I usually have when using uh, Grayford style focusers. These are the results of my autofocusing routine and uh, the parabola set to be pretty good actually. Uh, that's one result. Uh, this is the latest one. As you can see, not as perfect as the first example, but still it is a parabola. And uh, here is another result. Oh, here is another one. And here is another parabola. So, yep, as you can see, sometimes uh, I have not this perfect shape at the bottom, but overall the focusing routine goes pretty good, guys. And here is another example of the parabola that I get with my settings. Although here I had, I believe, a bit more than uh, two uh, step sizes. But yep, this is pretty much what you get, guys. And I want to leave the screen with my settings again so that you can check them out. And if you happen to have um, also a Middle X200 series telescope and you're using the stock focuser, then this is the example of the settings that my work for you guys. All right, and now let me show you what I did to my imaging train. So first of all, I want to take, not this one, but I want to take some quartz off. All right, so as I showed you earlier, this adapter that belongs to the mid telescope was a bottleneck of the system when using 
a steroid zone reducer and a graver style focuser. So I was looking for different like an alternative a mounting solution and while searching that I found a company that called Scope Stuff. They're located in the US and make different adapters, rings or mounting solutions for the systems and uh, basically they sell this adapter that has a uh, three and a quarter inch female thread on one side and M63 female thread on the other side. So I ordered this adapter and basically right now it's installed on the mid telescope instead of this adapter. So after installing this adapter you got M63 female thread. Now from that you can go with adapters that go and bring M63 to M54, M48 threads, whatever your imaging train requires. What I did is I got this adapter that was installed on my 122mm APO from SV Boni. Basically it's M63 male thread on one side and just a regular 2 inch size on the other side. And uh, I currently don't use this adapter just because I take deep sky images with a telescope and uh, instead of this adapter I got 0.x reducer directly threaded in uh, to the focuser of the SV Boni telescope. That's basically how I got this part. Uh, you just install it here. All you have to do is, if you happen to use Sterizona reducer, which is right here, so we got Sterizona reducer, I got my off-axis guider, filter wheel and the camera, all you do is just you just install it, then lock these screws from three sides, which by the way I really like about this adapter from SV Boni. Usually uh, when you use compression rings adapters, they have a screw on one side, sometimes on two sides, like I have on my uh, reflector telescope. This one has uh, locking screws on three sides, which is really good. And that's pretty much it. Like, <laughs> all we have to do is just connect all of our cables back, which is just a USB cable here and the power cable over there. And that's it. <laughs> pretty much uh, this is how it works guys now with this configuration and uh, when using Strizona reducer and IMX 571 sensor I still get a bit of vignetting on my images but now it's easily corrected with flats since the vignetting is caused I believe by the internal baffles uh, that go inside the two wall here and uh, yep as you saw on my first image and I'm gonna show you my final image that's gonna be a different one at the end of the video uh, there is no issue with the vignetting since the images were properly calibrated with flats, with darks and all the uh, possible calibration frames. Now I'm pretty happy with the results that I get. Alright, and the only flaw that I have with the current system is basically I'm a little limited with the possible angles of the rotation that I can set for the camera. So as you can see, uh, this is... Okay, I think you can see it well. Yeah, this is even better. So this is how everything looks like and if I decide to rotate the camera on this side I'm limited by the guide camera and if I happen to go on the other side then the filter wheel uh, touches the ZW electronic focuser. Now there are still a couple of solutions I believe that can be done. So the first solution is that if I get this cylinder shorter uh, I don't know if they sell them on the market, if not I'll probably reach scope stuff uh, folks to check if they can uh, make one of the adapters uh, shorter than this one, then the electronic focuser will be located closer to the OTA and I'll be able to get at least the filter wheel part of the camera rotating with no issues, that's the first thing. And the second thing is that I consider getting my Pegasus Astro Falcon rotator uh, version 2 from SV Boini telescope and installing it on this telescope uh, the rotator has, gee I don't remember the back focus, I'm gonna put it on the screen now, I think it's either 16 and a half or maybe 20 millimeters of back focus then uh, the camera and everything will be a bit farther from the OTA so if I get the rotator and I happen to get this part shorter then my rotation issue possibly will be resolved uh, anyway, if you have any ideas from you guys that are different from mine, just let me know in the comment section below and uh, I really want to uh, see what I can do. Now, the rotation part is not that crucial, you still can get nice images, but sometimes you really want to get a specific angle and uh, uh, 
uh, yeah, there, this is something that I just want to resolve. But so far, this is how everything looks like. Alright guys, so this is all I got for this video update on my build. To sum up, I'm almost done with building the setup and sending it to my semi-remote location with a beard darker skies. I didn't expect it would take me that long to finish the telescope, but I'm pretty happy with the first results that I'm getting. And if you happen to have a telescope from Meet LX200 series, then I really hope that this video series were useful to you. My next video with the telescope will be, I believe, will be a review of this Arizona Schmidt Kessigman reducer. And um, like I've had quite a good experience with the reducer itself to be able to get some insights to you guys on YouTube. So if you guys have any specific questions related to this Arizona reducer, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will cover them in my next video. If you like watching this video or you kind of like an idea of upgrading the Meet the 200 telescope series, then please consider giving the video a like so that more people can see it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and if you just did, then welcome to the channel. Really hope to see you in my future videos, and until next time, guys.